Virtual reality, immersed in high-performance computing and communications. This is jacking into cyberspace. But it's really happening like this in California, Florida, Illinois, Colorado, Connecticut, Alabama, Washington, and Virginia, in Germany and Japan. And people are seeing and touching and manipulating and changing their data like this in Chicago, Washington, D.C., Yorktown Heights, Pittsburgh, Boston, and Silicon Valley. They are immersing themselves in science in Champaign-Urbana, Madison, Argonne, and Chapel Hill, in manufacturing and construction at NASA Huntsville, NASA Ames, Marietta, Georgia, and Peoria, Illinois. In healthcare, in Chapel Hill, Rockville, Hanover, Princeton, and Chicago. In education and lifelong learning, in Seattle, Pittsburgh, and Washington, D.C. Suddenly, we are no longer outside the computer looking in, but we are inside the computer looking out. This is immersion. This is virtual reality. Virtual reality is the product of three decades of advances in display technology and high-end computing. Early computer graphics were a natural outgrowth of radar. In the 60s, computer-aided design first appeared. By the late 60s, primitive virtual reality was operating in real time. By the 70s, flight simulators could present dynamic, although visually simple, real-time scenes. Early supercomputers were used to further research in visual realism. Unlike the real-time flight simulators, these animations took minutes or hours per frame to compute. By the early 80s, the flight simulators achieved better realism through advanced hardware, software, and motion control platforms. At the same time, and throughout the 80s, the quest for realism bore fruit. Some of these exquisite images took an hour per frame to compute, which is a hundred thousand times slower than real-time. Interactivity and pleasing realism came together on workstations by the late 80s. In the early 90s, immersion in the display was achieved by bringing the screens closer to the eyes, or making the screens much, much bigger. Adding textures, shadows, and smooth motion adds to the effect. Being immersed is suddenly quite believable, and it can be breathtaking. Current research in virtual reality is applied to science and engineering, manufacturing, healthcare, and education and lifelong learning. The National Center for Atmospheric Research has developed a prototype virtual reality system for landing in bad weather. Clouds are not a problem to pilots given modern guidance systems, except that clouds may obscure severe weather problems like microbursts, which cause crashes. Based on real-time radar data, this system strips away the clouds and clearly shows the hazard with time to spare. At the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, virtual reality is being explored for use in radiation therapy planning. The physician examines positions of multiple radiation beams for cancer treatment. Where the beams cross, the effect is optimal. Here, virtual reality aims to give 3D verification that the placement is correct and that no healthy tissue is harmed. The physician can look all around and even enter into the patient's organs to see the beams crossing. In the manufacturing sector, building and testing prototypes is an essential but extremely expensive and time-consuming part of the design cycle. Virtual reality at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign is helping Caterpillar engineers see out of their loaders before they are built. Changes can be made to the CAD drawings and quickly retested for visibility, thus shortening the design cycle. At Argonne National Laboratory, researchers are developing ways of visualizing the molecular mechanisms of cancer. Data from supercomputer runs simulating protein action can be viewed using the CAVE Virtual Reality Theater at the University of Illinois at Chicago. While computing on the Intel Delta, Caltech scientists collaborate with colleagues in Chicago across the internet, viewing the simulated firing of neurons in the brain. University of Minnesota researchers fly through a simulation of the Kuwaiti oil fire smoke plumes drifting downwind through the Persian Gulf. And astrophysicists from the National Center for Supercomputing Applications 
study the birth of the universe and the formation of the galaxies. NASA Ames Research Center has pioneered virtual reality research and applications in flow field visualization for nearly a decade. Here, the operator is using the boom to look into and steer the real-time supercomputer simulation of particle traces. NASA Ames Telepresence Research puts you there. Your head and hands operate a remote imaging and sampling vehicle underwater in Antarctica or on another planet. This type of virtual reality puts you inside a robot with you in control.